Good morning, honey. Good morning, sweetheart. How about some coffee? Yeah, big one. Somebody kept me up last night. Well, I'm sorry I had a nightmare. You didn't seem to mind so much last night. Oh, no. <laughs> it was probably just spending the night in a new house is all. Yeah, I know. I have to admit, this place is kind of strange. Yeah, it's different. You know, I bet the guy that built this place must have been really bizarre. Well, hi, Spaz. How you doing, huh? Hey. What are you going to do today, sweetheart? Well, I don't know. I'm almost finished unpacking. Thought maybe I'd do a little exploring. Yeah. How about you? Did you see that bathroom yet on the second floor? Yeah. I like that. I think I'm going to turn it into a photo lab for myself. Keep me busy for a week or so. That's a good idea. What's in that box? Well, I don't know. I haven't gone through it yet. Let's see. Oh, it's Christmas ornament. Oh, look at this. Why? Just a sec. You remember this? Yeah. Yeah, I gave you this for Halloween. You rat! <laughs> you know it was Christmas Eve. It was the night you proposed to me. Are you sure I proposed to you? Yes. Of course I remember. Of course I do. You're forgiven. I better get to work. I got a lot to do. I'm gonna keep this little fella with me, though. So I'll always remember that fateful night. <laughs> Well, don't wait too hard. See you later.
I can't see a thing down there. Dusty. It's empty. to the new place yet, huh? this absent
damn it, it's locked. My dearest Gaston, I can't wait to see you, my angel. It's been far too long. Let's, Let's take, take a few, few moments, moments for ourselves, ourselves during Zoltan's party next week. We'll meet in the gazebo, away from all the revelry. Angel, how I yearn for your sweet kiss. Your strong arms holding me tight, protecting me. And oh, my dear, I need protecting. I'm afraid my husband's beginning to suspect. He watches me night and day. Perhaps we can steal away, run away, forever from his sight. My only consolation is thoughts of you, my angel. Always, your adoring love, Marie. Honey, you okay? Oh, God. The bed. What? The bed grabbed me. 
The bed grabbed you? Yes. <laughs> oh, here, calm down. Calm down. Wait here. Wait here, all right? Just wait here. I'll no, don't! Just calm down. See? It's okay, Ela. See? Nothing wrong. Goodness. This old drafty house has your imagination going, doesn't it? Oh, sweetheart. <laughs> I've got to get back to work. Are you going to be okay? Yes. You sure? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Just calm down. Okay. God, what is this? Why, there's a key stuck in the keyhole. I thought I'd turn my computer off.
gone. I'm just looking at my plans here, trying to figure out the best way for me to do this. Why you been alive? Yeah, it's really coming along. Did you want something, sweetheart? Oh no, I just came to see how you were doing. Nice doggy. Good dog. Good boy. Well, hello there, little lady. What can I do you for? Yeah, are you Bob Tompkins? When's the last time I took a look? <laughs> My husband bought a house from you. Mm, too bad you got a husband, honey. I'll have a seat. Uh, love to do that. <laughs> Uh, what's his name? Asshole. What was that? Gordon. Donald Gordon. Gordon. Gibson, Gleason, Gordon. Yeah. Donald Gordon, here we go. Oh. Who's them people what took over the old Caravash estate? It's Carnivash. I remember now. Your husband was that photographer. What takes the pictures for those magazines? Yeah. Huh. Well, my husband works for several magazines. Hmm. He's doing a project for Newsday magazine right now. Hmm. And you, little lady, uh, 
You're a writer, eh? Yes. I'm a novelist. Oh, a novelist. So what have you noveled? <laughs> have you heard of a book called Blue Moon Rising? No, can't say I have. I'm not surprised. Well, uh, young lady, unless there's something else, I think we'll cut this chit-chat for today. I got a lot of work to do. I got another client I'm going to meet. Yeah, I bet you do. Well, thanks. There is something. Yes? Keys. Are you sure you gave my husband all the keys to the Carnivash estate? There seem to be some locked doors. Well, I gave him all I had. But if you don't believe me, why don't you just check for yourself? Well, I think I will. Aha. Carnivash estate. All the keys, huh? What's this? It's a very large key. <sighs> so sue me! This reporter attended Carnot's Phantasmagoria show in London's Egyptian theater last night and found it horrific, spine-tingling, and incredible. Women were swooning in the aisles at the gory realism of his spectacles. For the uninitiated, Carnot's shows are not for the faint of heart, as they feature occult images, the black arts, torture devices, bodily amputations, of course, all are accompanied by a generous dose of screams, shrieks, howls, and frightening organ music. Those of you up to thrills and chills won't want to miss this. Letter opener.
Dear Jeremiah, It has come to my attention that you have recently acquired a unique book while traveling through Egypt this most recent winter. It is my understanding that this tome contains powerful information regarding ancient rituals of sorcery and magic. I relish the thought of reading it. As you know, I am sometimes frustrated by the fact that I cannot really control the world around me. That my so-called magic is merely nothing more than illusions. Next month, I will be giving a show in Paris. Will you be in town then? If so, I would like to set up a meeting during which I could examine your fascinating acquisition. If the book is really authentic, I would be more than willing to pay a hefty sum for its purchase. I look forward to hearing from you. Best regards, Zoltan.
Wow. This must be Carno's family tree. that lamp? Hey, hey. Oh, it's very funny. I, I don't know what happened. Uh, suddenly the damn lamp crashed out on top of my head. I, uh, I just finished tightening the screws. Oh. I'm fine. Oh. Oh. I'm gonna go upstairs, get cleaned up, put on some new clothes. How about some dinner? What would you like? I'm not really very hungry. Maybe some tuna or a salad or something. Then let's call it a night. That sounds good. I'm kind of tired. See you downstairs in about 10 minutes? Yeah, 10 minutes. starting my new book. So what? Did you go buy the drain cleaner like I asked you to? What? Drain cleaner? Don't be coy with me. I asked you several times to go buy me drain cleaner. Now, did you do it? Well, I know you said the sink was clogged in your dark room, but you never asked me to go get you any drain cleaner. I would have remembered something like that. You know, this is just like you. I bust my ass for you all the time. You don't do anything but sit on your butt like you're doing right now. What? What is wrong with you? I don't understand. Fine. Fine. The next time you want something, don't come crawling to me. Fine. I'll go to the store and get your goddamn drain cleaner.
that music? Where's it coming from? Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Sir, do you have anything that would clear a badly clogged drain? You know, a drain cleaner? A uh, drain cleaner, huh? Well, let's see, let me think. Ah, uh, here we are. This will do the job. Great. You gotta be careful with that, though. That's sulfuric acid. I mean, it'll burn through practically anything. I know, don't worry. All right, then that'll be uh, 475, please. Five. All right, out of five. And 25 cents a change. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a small town. We don't get many visitors. Are you new here? Yeah, my husband and I just bought the old Carnivash estate. 
We're doing a little renovating. The Karnavash estate? So you're the ones who moved there. Now wait, why does everybody look so shocked when I tell them I bought that place? What's wrong with it? Don't you know? Know what? That place is haunted. Haunted? Shh, not so loud. They say it's haunted by the ghost of that uh, magician. Uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, Carno? Yeah, that's it. They say he died a violent death there one night, along with his wife. That was almost a hundred years ago. A strange thing still, uh, still happened there. Like what? Well, like, well, I, I'm not exactly sure, but, uh, uh, you know, I don't keep up with those things, but if you're curious to know a little more, why, uh, there's this old geezer. His name is Malcolm. He lives out of town a ways. He actually used to live with Carno as a boy. As a boy? How old is this guy? I haven't seen him for quite a while, but I'll tell you, he is old. He's going to be over a hundred. And you say he used to live with Carno? That's what they say. Hmm. That's interesting. Well, thanks, uh... Harv. Well, thanks, Harv. You've been very informative. I'll look into this Malcolm guy. Well, good luck. <laughs> pretty, pretty girl, <laughs> and a little, little, little. <laughs> give me the nose, oh, oh. and the bubble, I love the bubble, oh, come on, <laughs> I love when you do the bubble, <laughs> oh, excuse me honey, you're back here again, now can you not see I am with a client? Yeah, I can see that, I, I don't know what I'm doing here, there's nothing I need from you. Good. Okay, where were we? No, quitty, quitty, we were just, <laughs> Look at these getaway sticks. Oh, I love that. <laughs> You're beautiful. <laughs> Sleaze ball. or 19th century cameos. Unfortunately, I don't have any at this time, but I do have some very fine old jewelry if you'd care to... Oh, uh-huh. I understand. I see. I see. Well, I will be on the lookout for any cameos of that description. And you said you'd pay well? All right. I'll be sure to call you back if I find anything. You're welcome. Goodbye. Hi. Hello. See anything you like? Oh, I'm just looking, thanks. Take your time, dear. I'll be here if you have any questions. Okay, thanks. Excuse me. Yes? You know that beautiful crucifix in the display case over there? Yes. I was wondering how much you're asking for it. It is a lovely piece, isn't it? Yes. 
This particular crucifix is not terribly old, only from the early 19th century, but it is a rare piece made out of titanium, a metal which had only just been discovered. I didn't know they made jewelry out of titanium. They don't, as a general rule. That's what makes this such a rare piece. It is interesting. So, how much? Oh, not much, considering its rarity. Only 2,200. That much? That's more than I can afford right now. Well, in that case, call me if you need any further assistance. Uh, ma'am? Yes? Hi, I'm Adrian Delaney. I just moved here from Boston. Um, I was wondering if you could maybe you... tell me... Did you say your name was Adrian Delaney? You're not a writer, are you? Yes, I am. Why do you ask? Oh, I just loved your mystery novel, Blue Moon Rising. I couldn't put it down for a week. Can I have your autograph? Yeah, sure. Oh, thank you. What's your next book about? Oh, now you're going to have to wait for that to come out. Oh, fiddle, I was afraid you'd say that. Well, what can I do for you, Adrian? Well, I was hoping maybe you could tell me something about the area. Listen, I know everything that goes on around here. Like, I know you're the one who bought the old Carnivash estate. If you ever have any questions, I'm the one to ask. Great, I'll do just that. Thanks, uh... Lou Ann. Only uh, most folks call me Lou. Okay. Thanks, Lou. Anytime. I have a question. Do you know anything about a very old man named Malcolm? Malcolm Wormshadow? <laughs> Do I ever. Talk about a strange old man. But I haven't seen him for months. Though Ethel does come into town to buy groceries. Who's Ethel? Well, she's Malcolm's nurse, and also companion and housekeeper and whatever else. Uh, he's very old, you know. Almost 110. 110? Is that possible? I told you, he's strange. It's almost like he's immortal or something. Most people in town avoid him. <laughs> they call him a witch, but I don't believe all their talk. Well, I'd like to speak to Malcolm. I understand he used to live in my house as a child. With Carno? That's true, he did, but I doubt if you can talk to him. He's like a hermit, very private. I'd like to try. I have a lot to ask him. No wonder you're a good writer. You have a lot of natural inquisitiveness. Well, to find him, he lives about a mile out of town, down a dirt track, on the other side of the bridge. Okay. Thanks for the info. Sure. I have a question. Oh, hello. Can I help you? I hate to bother you again, but I'm very curious about the old Carnivash estate. What can you tell me about the place? That is an interesting place. How do you like living there? Um, I'm not sure yet. I think it's going to take a little getting used to. Well, I don't envy you. Now, why do you say that? You know, people act very strange when I tell them I bought the Carnivash estate. It's no wonder. It's rumored to be haunted. Do you believe in ghosts? Of course not. Why? The ghost of Carno supposedly haunts the place. It's not even supposed to be safe to live there. Well, has anybody ever been hurt? Or, God forbid, killed there? I don't remember any deaths, but plenty of injuries. Over the years, the people who owned the place used to bring workmen in to fix things up, but invariably some bizarre accident would occur. One man had his arm chopped off, another man tumbled down a flight of stairs and broke his neck. He was paralyzed for life. God, that's terrible. Oh. 
Maybe these men were just careless. Well, maybe that could be. Even so, you be careful, all right? Yeah, I, I will. Thanks. Sure. Excuse me. Yes? I just have a simple question. Okay. Ask away. Well, I'm very curious. Has anybody at all lived in the Carnavash estate since Carno's death? I'm really not sure. The Templeton family bought the place about ten years after Carno's death. That would have been around, oh, 1910. There was talk of turning it into a museum. Electricity was added, but because of a rash of injuries and bizarre events, it never came about. But has anybody at all lived in the house before us? I really don't think so. The Templetons never seemed to show any interest about the place. Uh, I think they were bothered by the reputation the estate had. Anyway, it just seemed to sit there and be handed down from father to son to grandson. That's very interesting. Thanks. No problem. Lou? Hi there. Hi. I'm very curious about Carno. Wasn't he a world-renowned illusionist? He sure was. Carno was in his prime in the 1880s and 90s. He traveled all over the world with an extravagant magic show. Uh, we probably wouldn't be very impressed by it today, but back then they sure were. But I've heard that his magic acts tend to be a bit on the darker side. Yes, I've had that impression. But do you know what he was like as a man? He was very secretive. I don't think anybody really knew Carno, not even his wives. That brings up another good question. Exactly how many wives did he have? Let me see. One, two, three, four, five. He was married five times, I think. All of them from the theater circuit, most of them, were in his magic show. Why so many? What happened to them? Goodness, you are full of questions, aren't you? Well, let me see. Two or three of them died, and as for the others, uh, I don't know. One thing about Carno, though, that has never been proven or disproven. It is rumored he was into the black arts. Hmm. That's very interesting. Yes, isn't it? Well, thanks for your time. Sure, you're welcome. Excuse me, Lou. Oh, hello. Sorry to bother you again, but I was wondering, do you know if Carno had a child? Yes, he had a little girl, I think. Something happened to her, but I can't remember what. Why? Oh, that's okay. I was just wondering. All right. Have a nice day. Me too. Excuse me, Lou? Hello, Adrian. Can I help you? Well, I've been thinking about Carno. Do you know how he died? I don't know the details. But one night, Carno and his wife Marie had a violent argument, after which they both lay dead. The police found them the next morning. That was in the late 1890s. Well, where is Carno now? I think he's buried in a tomb somewhere on your property, along with Marie. Now that's a scary thought. Oh, he can't harm you now. Unless, of course, you believe in ghosts. Well, I don't. Carno's dead and gone. Of course, dear, of course. Oh, I'm sorry. Thanks, Lou. You're welcome. Don't mention it. Adrian, can I help you? Oh, no, thanks. Just looking around. Okay, let me know if you need me. Okay.
Hello? Somebody in here? Hello? Don, don't scare me like that. Scare you? I'm just trying to keep you on your toes, Adrian. You never know who'll be sneaking around this place. Sneaking around like you? Not me, Adrian. Can't you see? We're not alone on this island. They're probably just some vagrants. I doubt they're even here anymore. It better not be. Because if I catch her asses around here... Don, don't. Come on, honey. They're probably gone. You know, we always have our trusty watch cat's baths. Yeah, right. Don? Yeah. Here's the drain cleaner you asked for. It's about time. I've got work to do. And I don't want you hanging around out here, Adrian. I want you to stay up at the house. Damn it, it's locked. What do you want? I'm busy. Well, come on, Don. I just came by to see what you were doing. Okay, I'm sorry. Honey, are you feeling all right? Does your head still hurt? Adrian, leave me alone. I'm fine. Well, how about a little dinner? You could come downstairs and help me. We can make a little pasta, maybe some salad, a little vino. Yeah, it sounds great. Call me when it's ready.
a nice day for a picnic, don't you think, honey? Yeah, I guess so. So good to get you out of that dark room. Here's Beth. Well, I've got work to do, Adrian. We're not finished yet. Don, it can wait. You need to take some time out to relax. You're so stressed out. I've got publishing deadlines. Can you understand that? You see, I don't get the same ass-kissing royal treatment your publisher gives you. Don? How can you say that? I certainly do understand deadlines. Honey, what's wrong? Nothing. It's a headache, that's all. But... I'm gonna go lie down. Maybe you were right. Maybe I need some rest. Somebody there? Oh, 
I'll shut up. Whatever you want. anything right. He'd lose his head if it wasn't screwed on tight. Cyrus, you just wait till I get my hands on you. Cyrus want to apologize. That is for being a problem. <laughs> Wouldn't we, Cyrus? Wouldn't we, Cyrus? Huh? Oh, yeah. You don't have to apologize, Harriet. Accidents happen. But even so, you and your son are going to have to leave. This is private property. Uh, I've been thinking about that, uh, about your property and all. And uh, there's just no way around it. You need us. Need you? Yeah. How are you and your husband gonna take care of this whole place by your lonesomes, huh? Well, I hate to admit it, you have a point there. Right. Now, take a look at my son here. He's as strong as an ox. Can do any kind of outside work. I Me, mean, I can help around the house. I'm a great housekeeper. Yeah, I can see that. Well, what do you say, huh? Yeah. We'll work for nothing. Just room and board. Uh, Come on. Don't pitch us out in the cold. We got no place else to go. Oh, okay. You win. You can start tomorrow. Why don't you meet me up at the house in the morning? Yippee! We got us a job, Cyrus. You hear? <laughs> What's your name, lady? Uh, Adrian. Adrian Delaney. My husband is um, Don Gordon. Pleased to meet you, Adrian. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm a clairvoyant. I read palms. Can I? No, I don't. I don't think so. Oh, come on. Let me see. Hmm. So you're a lifeline? Yeah. Well. It's real long. That's good. But? But... There's this strange other line crossing it in the middle there. Hmm. Wonder what that means. Ah! Forget it. Don't mean nothing. <laughs> Come on, boy. Let's go get fix supper.
There's a key stuck in the keyhole. There we go. Yay, it worked. The Vampire by John Polidori To Malcolm from Zoltan Oh, that's the old guy from town
Dog. Nice doggy. Yes, what do you want? Uh, ma'am, I just bought the old Carnivage estate. I understand the man who lives here, Malcolm, I think his name is, used to live there as a young boy. So? Well, I was wondering if maybe I could speak to Malcolm about his experiences there. I have a lot of questions to ask him about the place. No. Mr. Warm Shadow is a very old man. I don't see any reason for you to come in and upset him with unpleasant memories. But I, I... I said no. You again? I already told you no. Wait! Well? I found this book in the tower room. See? Just a minute. All right, you can come in now. Thank you. Malcolm, she's here. Malcolm, she is here. Yes, sir. You found my book? Yes, I, I, I did, sir. Don't call me sir. I, 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 I don't like it. It, it, it. it makes me feel old. Well, what should I call you? 
My name is, is, is Malcolm. Call me that. Malcolm, is it true you lived with Carno as a boy? Did you sleep in the tower room? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> that was my room. What was Carno like? Enough. I have one question for you. And then, after that, you, you have to leave. What is it? Tell me, how is the house? Everything okay? I guess. What do you mean? Good. That's what I wanted to hear. I, I'm tired. You, you have to go now. But... It's, no. Well, thank you. Me. And where have you been all day? I don't know. Around? In town. I thought I told you to stay away from all of those people. People. What people? Those stupid townspeople. Oh, this is silly. I'm not finished with you yet. You're telling me what to do? Well, where were you all day? None of your business, honey. Well, I'll tell you what, you take care of your business and I'll take care of mine. Well, we're gonna see about that.
I found this in your room. Where did you get it? Why, Zoltan, what do you mean? You know exactly what I mean. Gaston gave it to you, didn't he? No, I bought it when we were in London last month. I'm not a fool, Marie, I've been watching. When he looks at you, you smile and blush. And he's always hovering around you backstage. But you're wrong, Zoltan. He's just a friend, that's all. I don't want him here tomorrow night. But he's your prop man. He has a right to be at your party. Please don't accuse me of this. Believe me, Zoltan. I love you. Only you. I want to believe you, Marie. I do. What the... I've been waiting for you. I'm sorry, Harriet. I forgot all about it. You ready to work? Yeah, ma'am. Tell me what to do. Well, let's see. Kitchen dishes need washing. Our bed needs to be made. Um, bathroom needs cleaning. Furniture needs polishing. And um, this floor needs sweeping. <laughs> I'll get right on it. Anything else? Question, Harriet. When I was in the tower room, I saw a little building in the woods on the eastern side of the island. Do you know anything about it? I've never been in those woods. The trail's washed out. Cyrus has, though. Go ask him. Okay, I will. Thanks. Anything else? Yeah, one more thing. Could you please empty the waste baskets? Yep. Anything else? Oh, by the way, uh, I see you carrying around that newspaper. You want me to throw it away for you? Please, would you? old tarot cards in the house. I don't read them. I thought maybe you'd want them. Let me see. <clears throat> oh, you're darn right I want them. They're beautiful. I thought you'd like them. Oh, I tell you what, I'll do a reading for you. No, you don't have to. Right now, over here. No, really, it's... Okay. What is it? 
Well, of course, it's, it's all in the interpretation, but... Uh. Come on, Harriet. Well... All right. <clears throat> this card in the middle is the fool. And that's you. And the fool is surrounded by all these seven other energies. Now this card, that's the lovers. And that means, that means that the fool is going to have to make a choice in the area of love. Now normally that ain't necessarily so bad, but all these other cards surrounding it, it Well, <clears throat> oh, these two cards, that's justice and strength. And that's good, because the fool can use them to help out with rational solutions and a balanced mind, and courage, strength, and determination. Sounds like I'm heading off to battle. You might be. Take a look at these other four cards here. The worst four cards in the deck. The Hanged Man. The Tower. The Devil. And Death. <laughs> the Hanged Man. A sacrifice is gonna happen. Down of existing forms. The devil. He brings evil. Death. A painful transformation's gonna happen. So, what's the verdict? hard to know, actually. Because you know it's all in the interpretation. But off the top of my head, I'd say that you're going to have some big trouble with your hubby. Evil's got him. And he's going to change. And you're going to have to muster all the strength and courage that you have to fight it be a sacrifice and then you're gonna have to use your wits to win well thanks Harriet <laughs> that was very interesting now I, I know that you think that this is all just a bunch of hogwash now Harriet I really appreciate you trying to help me I just don't believe in this stuff. Well, now, all I know is that there's some bad trouble around here. You just better watch your backside. Fine. I will. Nothing? Ow. What were you doing with my cat? 
I, I, I would I would the claim we did is all. Cyrus, don't play with him. Okay? That's too far. That'd be a long jump. I could see a little building in the woods. I was wondering, have you seen it? Yeah. It, it, it over there. Well, can you show me the way? Well, the trail's all washed out. Usually what I do, I just jump over it. But where is it, Cyrus? Over there. Oh, oh, okay. I'll show you. Come on. I've been waiting for you. I'm sorry, Cyrus. I tried to hurry. Oh, that's okay. Uh, see? There it is. Just like I told you. Come on. Oh, I don't know, Cyrus. Looks kind of dangerous. Isn't there another way? No. There you go. You're amazing, Cyrus. I can't believe you did that. Of course I did. I'm strong. See? Wow. Boy, <laughs> you are strong. Yeah, I, I know. Uh, Ma always tells me that that I'm more muscles than brains. <laughs> yeah, well, your mother was right, Cyrus. Ah, uh, heck. It, it ain't nothing. Cyrus! Oh. I gotta go.
So, Tom, what are you doing here? Did you want something? I can't see anything. Oh, it's missing a lens piece. Another window there by the tower room. God. Who that could be? Thank you. 
must be installing the phone. Hi. Yeah, hi, Mike. Your uh, caretaker's let me in. Oh, great. I'm going nuts without a phone. Yeah, I can understand that. This is quite a place you got here, man. Adrian. Yeah, it is quite a place, isn't it? I better get back to work. Okay. Everything okay here? So far, so good. Good. Um... Who is she? That's Harriet. I don't want her around our house, so you had better get rid of her.
September 14, 1889. Dear Diary, I grow increasingly fearful of Zoltan. I feel the burn of his eyes upon me as he watches my every move. Did my little girl have such fears? Did she suffer when he snuffed out her baby life? How could people believe him when he said it was an accident? It was no accident. But, dear diary, Zoltan wasn't always like this. I remember, not so long ago, when he was loving and gay. He was overjoyed when Sophia was born. I know, I remember. But after his trip to Paris last year, he changed. Something happened to him. I don't know what. Now, all I have left are my plants. I spend most of my time in my greenhouse, as far away as I can get from Zoltan's ever-watchful eyes. Dirty, rotten, stinking, filthy son of a bitch. You stay away from my life. Just what are you accusing me of, sir? I know exactly what you're doing here. John, shut up! I think you better leave. Eight thirty.
never stop talking, do you? Never, ever. You just keep growing on and on and on. Tonight for you a special feast, Regina. I prepared all your favorites. Mmm. Doesn't this look delicious? Mm. For starters, giblets in a rich red marinara sauce. Sweet and sour tripe. Still hungry? Scrambled brains? Oh, yes. Delightful. Yes. To, to tell you to, to, um, oh, come to Dubai. Wait, what for, Cyrus? Uh, uh I, I think it has something to do with, uh, uh, oh, the seance. Ma, she's here. Welcome, oh, seeker of the spirit world. Oh, here he is. Please have a seat.
Let the seance begin. spirits of the netherworld heed us now talk to us so shades of darkness give us a gleam of your essence give us a sign of your spiritual being I think they're button Oh, restless souls, this poor gal seeks answers, answers to questions unknown. You just got to... Oh, no. Pestilence is free to infect once more. You are the chosen one. Only you can send it back. Find the dragon. It will show the way.
Well, well, look who's here. To my dear husband. Here's to you. No, here's to you, Victoria. Oh God, <laughs> it's just a rat. What the hell?
a red rose from the beautiful lady. Oh, Gaston, you did miss me. I was so afraid you wouldn't come. How can you say that, my dear? All I ever think about is you. Oh, Angel, how I love you. Sultan knows about us, Gaston. He found my necklace. I, I told him I bought it in London, but he knows. I'm so afraid of him. You must come away with me, Marie. I'll take you far away from here. I can't leave. He'll find me. I know he will. He'll kill me like he did the others. Next week, Sultan's performing his new escape trick for the first time. I can set the machine so it won't work. He won't be able to escape. But the fire, the blade. Yes, my darling. He wouldn't survive. Tell me what to do. What is this? Dragon will lead the way. Oh, my God, secret panel.
too far. That'd be a long jump. Carno and Malcolm, 1897. Look at you. I don't care anymore. I just don't care. I'm going to bed.
2020. last night. That's all. Don, let's leave. Please. We've got to get out of here. Look what this, this place is doing to you. Leave. Leave. This is our home, Adrian. We can never leave this place. want. Hi. Yeah, I'm... I don't care about the damn phone. I'll get out of here as soon as I can. All right, fine. Get in here and fix it. And then you leave. strange symbols. Looks like Latin. It's been a long time since Latin class.
Carno, I found you. To my angel, from Marie. Kid.
Hey, Mike. Oh, hi. I'm just finishing up this job. I'll get out of here as soon as I can. Mike, I want to apologize for Don. He just... He hasn't been himself lately. Well, you don't have to say nothing. I just don't want to get tangled up in family quarrels, that's all. I know. I understand. Well, you better get back to work. Yep. in a few minutes, darling. Don't be long, Angel.
Harriet? Oh, um, I see you caught us. Where are you going? Can't you see? We're leaving. We're getting the hell out of here. But I thought you needed a job and a place to stay. Well, uh, I didn't want to say anything, but uh, now that you're here, I saw your hubby last night. And, well, he threatened my boy and me. Said that uh, if me and Cyrus didn't leave, we'd be hanging from the rafters. And I believed him. I saw the look in his eyes. There's something real bad around here. And I can't explain it, but it exists. What exists? Evil. And if you had any sense, young lady, you'd leave too. Cyrus? Huh? You don't want to leave, do you? Well... Ma, I said we got Boy. it. Stop your cabin and get back to work. Harriet, can't you change your mind about leaving? I'll talk to Dom. Look, don't take it personal. It ain't you. Cyrus and me gotta go, that's that. An antique cameo brooch. Oh, Adrian, I'm glad you're here. I have some important newspaper articles you might want to see. Oh, really? Let me see. When you started questioning me about Carno's old estate, I thought of something. My mother started this scrapbook of important news articles when she was very young. She added to it almost up until the day she died. That was four years ago. I remembered seeing some old articles about Carno in here, so I dug it up. This is wonderful. Can I keep it for a while? Oh, no, I, I couldn't let it go. It's my mother's. You have to look at it here. I'm sorry. Oh, no problem. I'm just glad you found it. Unfortunately, I may not have time right now. When can I read them? Any time. I will leave it right here on the counter. Come in whenever you want. Thanks, Lou. I appreciate it. Don't mention it. Excuse me, Lou. Oh, hello, Adrian. I just wanted to thank you for answering all of my pesky questions. I won't bother you again with them. Oh, it's no bother. I just hope I've helped you. Oh, you really have. I've learned a lot. I'm glad. Excuse me. 
Lou? Oh, yes, Adrian. How can I help you? I understand you're interested in old cameos. Yes, I am. Well, I found this old cameo brooch in my house in an old trunk. I thought maybe you might be interested in it. Hmm, let me see. I was wondering if maybe you would be interested in trading it for that crucifix over there. Well, sure. There you go. Oh, great. Thanks a lot. You're welcome, and thank you. Yes? What do you want? Well? Here, I wanted to give Malcolm this old photo. <laughs> I found it at the Carnivash estate. Mm -hmm. It's a photo of Malcolm and Carno. See what's written on the back? See Malcolm as a young boy. Please, you've got to let me in to see Malcolm. It's important. Just a minute. Malcolm will see you now. She is here, Malcolm. Set. I remember. <laughs> what was it? This picture. I was just a young nipper of ten. Carno was my hero. Then. Your hero? Yeah. I know what you saw in this picture. Saw? Yeah. The evil. It's back. And my husband? <laughs> it meant me to live for you. What? Yeah, the lady. Sit down. I have something to tell you. Carno and his first wife adopted me. I, at that time, he was a good man, respected by his colleagues, loved by his wife, admired by his audiences. But all that changed when he got the book. He gained immense powers through contact with the black forces. Through the book, he unleashed a demon, an entity so evil it had no name, no worldly description. This 
thing came to possess Kano, body and soul. Kano became like it. He became very powerful, and his his fame and and, and his wealth increased. But. Cursed. He had loved his wife Hortensia and their baby daughter, but all that changed. He became abusive. I don't have proof, but I believe he killed them both. I believe he killed all his wives. But Malcolm, what happened the night Carno and Marie died? Carno's final days came when Marie took up with his prophet man, Gaston Warwick. Obviously, Marie suspected Carno of committing terrible deeds with herself as his next victim. Together, Marie and Gaston hatched a plan. He had a new act, an amazing feat of escape. But Marie rigged the machine. Carno couldn't escape. They figured it would kill him. It almost did. Two weeks, Carno lay in a coma. But then, one night, he awoke, swearing revenge. I saw Carno drag an unconscious Gaston into his theater. There, from within the secret passages, I watched as Carno tortured and mutilated the poor man, leaving him dead. Then it was Marie's turn. Totally crazed, nothing but pure revenge on his mind, Carno started up that god awful machine, that awful contraption. And before my very eyes, I saw that he died. I'll never forget the look of shocked surprise on Carno's face. Poor Gaston was dying. This was his final heroic act. To my horror, I then saw a demon. That's all I know to call it leave his body and disappear through the theatre floor. I knew where it was going. Carno knew it too. My only thought was running away, but I, I hesitated when when I saw Carno going to the same place the demon had gone. I rushed back to the hidden passages just in time to see Carno carrying the chest which held that evil book. Then, just before reaching the chapel, he stumbled and fell for the last time. I saw him cross himself in the Catholic way before dying. I think he was trying to make his peace with God. I picked up the chest containing that horrid book and I assume the demon itself and carried it into the chapel. I really don't know what 
I thought I was doing, but somehow I, I, I felt as if I were containing this cursed evil. I had hoped forever. After leaving the chapel, I, I then dragged Carnot's body back to his secret chamber, where he now lies. But wait, Carno's not in his tomb? No, 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 that is Gaston Warwick. He, he was so mutilated that they all thought he was Carno. I said nothing. I let them think what they wanted. And what about the demon? The demon? Oh, that's why I agreed to talk with you. Somehow, it must have been released. Oh, my God. Dawn. What can we do? The only answer is the accursed book. Oh, with it, you, you've got to send that, that thing back to where it came from, back to the other side. You have seen the book. Yes. I thought so. All right, young woman. You're the only one who can do this. Your husband's soul is ensnared. I'm not sure what I can do or what can be done for him. But if you can somehow get close to the demon, here's what you can do. You'll need the book, a, a holy item, um, the stone of Hammurabi, and the blood of a sentient being. Take the book and... Okay, Adrian, you're all set. Great. Phone's in and it works just fine. Why don't you go ahead and test it? Okay. Uh, Mike, I want to apologize for Don again. He just hasn't been himself lately. Normally, he's a very nice guy. He Really? Yeah, don't even worry about it. It's no big deal. Do you call me if you have any trouble, okay? I will. I sure will. Thanks.
can't go like this. I'm gonna do something. never been attempted before. The incredible Carno will defy death. In this, his newest feat, featuring the horrifying throne of terror. What are you doing, Marie? Uh, why? I saw you with him last night. Admit it, you're still seeing him, aren't you? No. You're out of your mind. Have all been waiting for. Ladies and gentlemen, the incredible Arno! Go to hell. 
Official hint keeper. I watch your every move. Ask me for a hint if you are hopelessly stuck, but use me sparingly. Too many hints can spoil the game. The open dark room beckons. Body is a wonderful thing, but the head is useless. Ah! You were a very good subject, Adrian. You cooperated with me very well. Ah!
Monsieur. <rire>
God, it's in Latin. Can I remember this? State intra circulum magicum. Let's see. Stand inside circle. Magic circle. I'm already in a circle. Um, Ponate, fascinum, in paganum, apertum, liberi. Place, um, talisman, in open book page. Talisman? Tenete, hoc betum, super fascinum, et, et cantate, hoc carmen. Uh, hold blessed item over talisman and say this incantation. Mundi Tenebricosi! <laughs> 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 